Hi everyone, today I'm in the Ancient World Gallery here in person for the first time, which is very exciting. So I'm just going to give a quick walkthrough of the space to give you a sense of its layout and the breadth of objects that we have in here as of the 2019 reinstallation. So you enter the space at the end of the hall on the second floor. And throughout the center of the gallery, we have several freestanding cases and pedestals, which house mostly larger ceramic vessels, as well as a few stone sculptures. There is a range of ancient cultures represented here, but most of these vessels function in pretty similar ways, typically storing food or liquid to either be consumed or offered to the dead. And just to zoom in on a few of them, this Neolithic guan is a tall earthenware storage jar that's actually the oldest object in this gallery. It dates back to the mid third millennium BCE and is of the Majie Yao culture in the northwest region of China. It was created using a coil technique before being fired at a very high temperature, and these bold geometric motifs were quite typical among the pottery of the Magyal culture, even though zoomorphic and more figurative natural motifs also would have been common. So to highlight the breadth of timescales here, over in this case we have three smaller vessels, which are some of the most recent additions in the gallery. We have a Peruvian terracotta vase, a Korean stoneware pedestal dish, and a dark clay Native American jar from the Mogyan culture, which dates between 200 and 1000 CE. And this Mogyan jar was gifted by Dr. Catherine Gable, who is an alumna as well as a past professor and much beloved dean of the School of Social Work at Smith. And in addition to this jar, she has generously gifted a larger collection of Southwest Native American objects to the museum, so her contributions have substantially expanded the museum's holdings in this area. So immediately to the right as you enter, we have a display of bronze Chinese currency, as well as silver and gold Greek and Roman coins. And this area is likely where a monitor for the digital map will eventually be situated. And moving along, here we have a double-sided case dedicated to powerful and magical figures from a variety of cultures. So on this entry side, we have a Costa Rican kneeling man made of volcanic stone, a terracotta Nayarit woman carrying a bowl from Mexico, and a pair of Chinese tomb guardians. And coming over to the other side of the case, we have two female idols from Greece and several Egyptian shabti, which were these mummy-shaped figurines that were placed in tombs to substitute for the deceased. Now onto the rightmost center case, we have objects pertaining to the afterlife, which of course many of the objects in this gallery can straddle some of the different groupings, but here we have objects that were most intimately associated with the deceased body, such as this imperial Roman cinerary urn, a fragment of Egyptian cartonage, which was a protective cover for the mummified body, as well as a plaster mummy mask. And on the far left here, there's a display of jade artifacts found in ancient Chinese tomb furnishings, which jade is an extremely valued stone that's very difficult to carve and believed to preserve the body. So the cicada-shaped mouthpiece and eye covers were used to seal the deceased body, which you can see a subtle nod to this context in the faint outline of a face behind them and these pigs and birds would have been held in the person's hands to offer wealth and protection into the afterlife. Here we have the leftmost center case whose theme is daily life and accordingly contains objects that were created with specific functions for daily use. For instance, these three circular objects are the backs of Chinese and Greek mirrors, the center of which has an outer band of characters to transition to more examples of ancient writing systems below, with a cuneiform tablet from Babylonia and an Egyptian funerary cone with hieroglyphs. And then I really love this Mayan dish that also functioned as a musical instrument because the feet are filled with pellets that rattle when shaken. And sort of similarly over here to the far right, this Greek kylix, which is a drinking cup, had a bit of a dual function by acting as a mask, 
with these prominent eyes to ward off evil when raised to the mouth. And it's displayed here in front of a mirror so you can see the gorgon that additionally appeared once the wine was emptied. This corner case explores the theme of luxury and ornament. So it contains a variety of precious materials, including more Chinese jades. We have pendants in the shapes of a human figure, a dragon, and a fish, as well as a perforated disc known as B. There are also gold, Greek, and Roman earrings, an Egyptian scarab, and a bronze Sino-Siberian belt plaque. Many of these items functioned as jewelry or decorative elements for clothing or furniture, so they would have been traded as luxury goods via major trade networks such as the Silk Road. Lastly, this is the Bravery and Vigor case, which contains figures that in some way exemplify courage and were used to assert often military power. And we've been looking at this case also to discuss issues of provenance and authenticity because this Roman emperor bust, for instance, has been suspected for a while of being a 20th century reproduction. And so this is one thing we're hoping to bring more transparency to on the interactive map. And finally, we have a large mosaic personifying the River Pyramus that was excavated at the seaport of Antioch, a prominent city of the ancient Roman world. And it was actually a segment of a floor pavement. So at one point it was displayed on the floor in the museum, but it's now more prominently mounted on the wall over here by the window.